Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacy, and today I'm very excited because we have one of our famous guests coming back to the show, and it's Mira Shaw. And today she's going to talk about owning your reality, and it's an amazing topic, and she has some amazing things to tell us about it. So Mira, why don't you take the floor and tell everybody about a little about yourself and about how we can actually own our own reality. Thank you, Stacey. And it's actually really good to be back on the show. We spoke a few months ago and it was so fun. So I'm really actually glad to be back. Um, it's a real honor. And um, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm Mira. I'm based all the way in London, across the pond, as they call it. So big hello from across the pond. And I want to talk today. I'm a success coach. I do talks, workshops, mindset you know, but um, I want to really talk about something that's really passionate to my heart. And I did a talk on this recently, and it's very exciting. And as Stacey said, it's called Owning Your Reality. And why it's exciting is because I think we forget that we have more control over our reality than we think. And every now and then we, we need a big reminder oh, actually, it's my reality, it's my world, and I can shape it, and I can own it a lot more than I think. And there are lots of different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. But the first thing is just to go, oh, yeah, I'm owning my reality. And it doesn't matter where you are, whether your reality is something that's not great, you really want to change it, or you might want to tweak it a little bit, or you might want to up-level it. We're always looking to grow and up-level our reality, but it doesn't matter where you are. You've either slipped and it's not great or it's good, but it needs to be better because it always there's always more things we can do to make it better. Or it's pretty good, but you want to make it really, really good. Right. So whatever it is, you deserve to have the best version of your reality because it's your life and your reality. And I just want to remind everybody it's your life, it's your reality, and you really deserve to make it the best you can. And it's all yours for grabs. Now, you say that your thoughts are your reality. Now, explain that to people so they understand, you know, my thoughts are my reality. What does that mean? Like, how can I make my thoughts a reality? Because sometimes your thoughts are your thoughts. They could be thoughts, you could be daydreaming, you know, but how do we actually turn those thoughts in our mind into our actual reality? Yeah. So the interesting thing is obviously at very basic level, our thoughts are negative or positive, but there's a range between negative and positive, but it's either to simplify a thought can be negative or positive. The thing is when we are in that negative cycle, either it's shaped by our experiences Often it's a bit of a cycle and often actually what it is, is it's very, it's it's accumulation of things. It's our experiences. It's what we're reading. It's who we're hanging out with. It's what we're watching in the news, which is always negative and fear-based. Yes. Then you end up in that downward cycle. You're not doing exciting things. You're not walking. You're not grounding. So the mind, the thoughts start becoming more and more negative. But if you lead a life, where you can change the quality of your thoughts. So you're walking every day, you're doing self-care, you're meditating, you're grounding, you're listening to good podcasts, you're reading good books, you're hanging out with people who are positive. Your thoughts naturally change. So yes. you can influence the negative and positive levels of your thoughts. And I'll give you another little example of how your thoughts could shape your reality. Let's go really basic. This is the one I use at school with kids and they love it, but it's true. If in the morning, say you're wearing a white top and you pick up a coffee and you're going for this meeting and you and you start going, I must not spill the coffee. I must not spill the coffee. I must not spill the coffee. What is most likely to happen? <laughs> you're going to spill the coffee, right? Right. I must not forget my keys. I must not forget my keys. Yeah. So what you focus on tends to happen a lot. And a lot of it is signaling your brain because your brain hears, forget the keys. Your brain is so focused on not spilling the coffee. So your brain is wired towards that attention. I must mm -hmm. not be late. 
you know what's going to happen if you're so focused on, I must not be late. It's far better to not think about it or to say, right, I've got this. I'm going to be on time. And then your brain goes, oh, yeah, we're on time. Mm -hmm. It's just a different kind of body signal that you give. But it all starts with your thoughts. And then... If we go deeper, you know, your whole body language, your whole energy system is striving off that one thought. And so, you know, it's really important that your thoughts can create your reality. And um, there's a whole book on this. And a lot of people have heard of the law of attraction. So what you think is what you attract. And um, there's a book called The Secret, which I think made it quite mainstream, although it's been around. This law has been around a while. And the book, The the Secret is What You Think Becomes Your Reality. Mm -hmm. Um, However, I do say that there is one thing that these books don't mention, which is that, yes, your thoughts create your reality. And it's used a lot for manifestation where you're like, I'm abundant, I'm rich, I'm going to get this job, I'm going to get this interview. And it does work. But what they really don't focus on is the receiving part. So... If the universe wants to give you the thing you have asked for, if you either are closed off to receiving it or you only see it in a particular way or unfortunately a lot of us are wired to not believe we deserve things, then it's going to be hard for that to land into your frequency because the deserving part needs a little more openness. Now, how does a person change that? Like, how does a person change? Some people get so set into their thoughts that they just tend to believe it and they can't get out of that niche. How do you, how do you, what's a a good way or some tips to change your thoughts, to change, you know, so you can can actually have good positive thoughts and actually have, uh, when you, when you practice the law of attraction, you're focusing on good things and you're you're confident you know you can talk out to the universe and you you know you can feel the energy the connection because you're connected yeah and you use a lovely word connected so there's a there's lots of different ways of doing it but if i focus on sort of three or five of my favorites yeah um, the first one is um i i have a big connection with the divine so if you are if It's whatever your faith is. If you believe in the universe, if you believe in energy, if you believe in the divine, if you're religious, you believe in a God, wherever your faith comes from, even if your faith comes from yourself, if you don't think it's outside of you, cultivating that faith is really, really important. So I think some discipline of some meditation, some faith, knowing that you're not alone and you're supported in whatever you ask for. I think for me, that would be like, for me personally, that's my top tip. Without that, I don't do anything in my life with that. I, I'm just very spiritual, so I'm not religious, but I don't start my day. I don't do anything my day without just a little gratitude prayer and the blessings of God to start in my day. That's me, though. Whatever version of that works for you, the faith is the big thing. The second thing is you have to keep reminding yourself, and this is from me, somebody who really suffered from low self-esteem, suffered, suffers. Yeah, I've worked on it a lot, but you you maybe use affirmations and remind yourself, we all deserve everything we want. We're all worthy of having what we want, right? Yes. There's no reason somebody else is more worthy than another person on this planet. We are all equal in that sense. So if you can remind yourself, and a really good affirmation is, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, that rewires your brain. Yeah. So that's another important one. Third one is self-care, self-love. When you start treating yourself well, you everything about your vibe elevates because you're signaling to yourself you're worthy of self-care, you're worthy of nice things you're worthy of loving thoughts of kind and compassionate self-talk you know self-talk where they say we're much more critical with ourselves than we are with other people and a tip for like those compassionate thoughts is I always say how would you speak to your child 
speak to yourself in that same way. Everybody's really kind and loving to their kids. Yes. Be that to yourself, right? Yes. So that it's bringing that in. And then um, another really good um, tip I would say is who you hang around with. Yes. Big, very important factor. That's really, I cannot, I cannot like say how important it is they say you become the average of the five people you hang out with and I don't just mean physically I mean social media I mean um, news I mean what you read yeah all that starts feeding your brain and those thoughts stay with you all day if all you've read is oh there's a recession oh prices are going up oh people are losing jobs oh I don't know if you're in bad relationships or you're reading about divorces and your friends are encouraging you, then that's what your brain starts thinking about. If you think, right, I own my reality. I'm taking charge of this. And then you start going, actually, what do I need to do to change this? I need to have a conversation. I need to have some boundaries. Yeah, it's just a very different way of thinking. But if you're around people who are boundaried and have those difficult conversations, then you will start doing the same because you'll see how healthy, positive people act and behave. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, we don't realize that the world is almost, it's over 90% energy. So if you have negative energy next to you, you're, you're, you're actually absorbing some of that negativity, even though you're, you know, you're, it drains you. Have you ever talked to someone on the phone who's negative or you're sitting next to someone who's negative and all they're doing is saying negative things and and they're just one negative thing after another. Did you ever feel drained after that conversation? How do you feel? It's like the the energy. It's so exhausting, right? Yes. So it's negative energy. You know, we are who we are in our environment. So like you said, it's very important to, 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 to really decide who's going to be in that close environment, because it really does. I agree with you hundred percent plays a huge impact on who you become and how you feel. Huge. And this heaviness you're talking about, they've started seeing that actually emotions have a weight. So any emotion that's love and below, well, not love and, but below love is a very heavy, they can actually calibrate it to a heaviness. Really? And anything, anything that's a frequency of love and higher is where you want to operate and be around people. And a good analogy, I use this with um, children sometimes, but it's really useful reminder for adults as well, right? I just say, look, you're not going to just let anybody into your room. Well, I hope not. <laughs> you're very particular about, you should be very particular about who enters your house, who enters your bedroom. You should be very particular. You're not just going to let anybody hug you. You're going to be very particular about who hugs you. So you're very boundaried around those areas. In that same way, you should also be very boundaried about who you let into your mind. Yes. It's also a sacred space in the same way those things were sacred space. So oh, I hope people can see the analogy of it being sacred and you are boundaried with the other things so you get as boundaried with your mind you do and you know what if you if someone keeps feeding you positivity you're going to feel that that energy you're going to feel that motivation you know it's it's you know positive energy makes you feel positive gives you you know motivation it inspires you you know so it, it's very important that you put yourself around positiveness and 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 like you said I, I that's amazing that you know that emotions have a weight to it yeah I never thought about that I never there's even a book, I've forgotten the name but it's called force field and it talks about there's a calibration of emotions so shame and guilt as you would expect are at the lower spectrum and that's why they say that things like shame guilt have a heaviness to them they actually do have a physical heaviness to them and then it goes on. And I think courage is the tipping point. And then after courage, you get into love and gratitude and, you know, much higher frequencies. So, yeah. 
Now, do you have any tips on how someone could practice gratitude and and practice improving their their way of of accepting and and giving love? Because you know, not everyone knows how to love. You know, or they have trouble. You know, they want to learn how to love, but they have a difficulty doing it. Do you have any suggestions for anybody? Who- yeah, and love is really difficult because you know for many reasons a lot of me included by the way you know we shut our heart off because of experiences we've had because of what we read because we're told not to trust you know very many things shape but slowly slowly and the older you get we just you know through our experiences we get more or less trusting and then the heart gets we put up more barriers and we close it more and you know all sorts of things So again, meditation and faith Mm -hmm. are really, really important. When you start cultivating that faith and you sit in meditation, which gives you a sense of peace, you feel stronger in yourself. And I think if I use my own experience, the reason I used to close my heart or put boundaries is to protect myself. Yes. Now I feel, A, I feel so connected. I'm like, whatever gets thrown at me, I've got my guides, my angels, I've got God helping me just, I've got the toolkit to just release it out of my DNA, out of my energy. So I've got the tools through the meditation, the faith and the trust. But also all of that has made me understand who I am and I've become really strong as a person that I know that if an expert, it doesn't mean I won't experience all those things again but I know they won't affect me in the same way they'll affect me for a few minutes they'll affect me for maybe half an hour or you know for depends on the length of time maybe a couple of hours but I also know that's not gonna drain me and sink me the way it would have in the past I'll be able to just churn through and move through it a lot faster and detach from it a lot faster using gratitude but I've had to cultivate the strength in myself to know that I have the resiliency and the emotional capacity now to move through it faster because you can't think things are not going to hurt you. We're human. They are. Some will be intentional. Some will be unintentional. That's life, right? Yeah, definitely. Now, you know, there, there are some people who have a hard time letting go. So when, you know, for, for others, you know, it's easier to let go and just move forward, but then there are others who hold on and they have such a hard time letting go. Is there any tips or any I, suggestions that you might want to give to them for people who have a hard time letting go and it, and it's holding them back? Would you suggest specific things to help them learn to let go and just, you know? Yeah. And letting go is kind of involves, if you look at it deeply, obviously it involves forgiveness. And uh, if you are like me and you believe in um, reincarnation and things, not everybody does, but I'm just saying forgiveness takes like millions of lifetimes of practice. Just Back to the front, so just wanted to throw out there because some people understand the depth of forgiveness. Yes. You know? mm-hmm. And if you're religious, you know, Jesus went on the cross and forgave, um, you know, the sins of everybody. So that's the level it can go to. Nevertheless, if I just bring it back to a second, an instant of a daily life, really, you know, you have to ask yourself the question, what is this serving me, right? This energy And sometimes you forgive and you let go, not because you forgive the other person or because you think what they did was okay, but you forgive them because you are bearing the cross and you are not able to move on when you are holding that cross, if I call it that, right? You're carrying the burden. So actually, if you can't forgive them for what they've done, forgive them because you want to move on. You don't want understand that when you don't forgive you are giving them power over you and it's stopping you from moving on so you forgive because you want to move on that's the first thing the second thing is you need to have quite a lot of interesting things going on in your life Mm -hmm. so that actually that thing isn't the most important thing in your life there should be many important things that go that are going on in your life that 
that thing you can you can park and say, right, I'll come back to thinking about it this evening. So then you've parked it because there's so many other things in the day that need your attention. Right. So you need to have a fulfilled life. Yes. Full of as many important things so that you can say, okay, I'll come back to this thing later. But by the time you've done all your other things, the charge is gone. Yes, it's very true. Some things do take a lot to work through. They trigger you because it's also part of your journey, you know, but it's it's kind of understanding that nothing should have that much power over you. Um, it's through the daily practice. One thing I love is, you know, you can write things down. You can write a letter to the person you're annoyed. Yes. Um, you can journal and then you don't send the letter, but you just burn it. So the yes. charge has gone. It's gone from you to the paper, from the paper to spirit. Yeah. So there's a nice release process that's happened. And it's quite cathartic because you get a pillow, you get a punch, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's good to get that emotion out. I'm not saying ignore the emotion. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying release it and then give it the time it needs. Don't let it take over your life. Right, And then journaling is really good. What I love about journaling, although it's a little bit difficult when you're forgiving, but um, obviously people talk about writing down um, your thoughts and then you can burn them, whatever you do. I have found a new way of journaling that I talk about that I think is incredibly more powerful. And I do this um, as and when I can. But Instead of journaling, I voice note it or I video note it. And then oh. I listen to it back. Do you really? So when, you, when you write it and then you listen back to yourself, it's so powerful because not only have you written your thoughts, you play them back to yourself. Yeah. But what it also has started doing for me is it cultivates a beautiful relationship with yourself because you start hearing that vulnerable person in you when you write certain things and you start loving that vulnerable person you know when you feel strong when you see it and hear yourself back with those thoughts it's really powerful and you can really develop a deep relationship so I really encourage some kind of um, voice note video note journaling extremely powerful I like that. You know, I ha- I haven't heard about that. You know, mention. You know, I've I've heard many people mentioning about writing a letter and then burning it, and that's very powerful. There's so much powerful, um, you know, positive responses from people that have done that, and it has helped them tremendously. But I've never heard of video journaling, and I kind of like that concept. It's it's I, I like that. It's really powerful, really uncomfortable at the start if you've not done it, but it really is, uh, you know, then when you're walking, you can play it back. You don't have to play it back there. And then it really, I, I would really encourage people to try. It really forms a different kind of relationship with yourself. And you're able to get things out that you might be embarrassed to tell some other people or, you know, or you're ashamed to tell other people, because that's the one thing that hinders people from expressing their emotions is they have nobody to express it to. They feel embarrassed to go to friends or family or even to a therapist and a support group. It takes a lot for people to, to do that. And some people, you know, have a hard time expressing their emotions, but if you do it on video, you know, that you're no one's going to hear it but you. You could say whatever you want. I I think that's very powerful. Oh, please do try it and let me know how that goes. I definitely will. Now, if you had to like, you know, give some people like, like beginner tips, you know, on how to own your reality, like, you know, if people, you know, people are really interested in actually taking control of their life, owning their reality and you know, making their reality the best possible reality that life could ever give them. What tips would you give them? You know, you know, we went over a whole bunch right now, but, you know, like simplistically, like, you know, as a takeaway, you know, maybe explain a couple of yeah, principles. If I, was to re- if I was to just say, if you haven't had this anything in the podcast but you're just catching it now what's my top thing that we haven't covered two things one thing we covered at the start but you are worth it you deserve the best you deserve the best reality for yourself and you're worthy of creating and owning the best reality for yourself that's the top thing just understand that 
you own your reality and you are worthy of creating yourself the best reality you can. That's kind of the first and the only thing, if nothing else. Yes. But the second thing I would say, and this is quite a fun thing, visualize it. Yeah. Yeah. Like Just close your eyes and dream. We all love a bit of a daydream, but daydream your reality and that and then make it happen. Right. And and maybe set some goals. Maybe after after visualizing it, maybe jot down some short term and long term goals and, and ask yourself, okay, how am I gonna do this? You now know, how am I gonna do this? Imagine it, and then the how should be, you know, a lot easier. That's yeah. It. I I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. And it's fun, right? Everybody loves to daydream. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I, you know, I'm a Pisces. We're born to daydream. You know, we're just, it's, it's in our astrology. <laughs> there you go. Then. You've already got it nailed naturally. I already got it. Yeah. We are, we are the queens and kings of daydreaming. But, you know, now if, if anyone who want, you know, I, you know, you, you, I, I know you do a lot of speaking events and you coach people and you have your blog, tell people about some of the services you do and tell people some of the things you offer and you have that could help them and where they can find you. So the best thing is if you go on my website, it's um, unlimitedtransformations.com. I'll repeat that, Unlimited Transformations. Dot com, And if you go on my website, I offer, um, I do a lot of talks and workshops, as you say, you can sign up to my newsletter, just reach out to me, email me, I love hearing from people. And I do a lot of one to one work. So probably one to one work. Um, you can just reach out to me, email me, you can have a consultation. And that's just a free consultation for 15 minutes. There's no cost. There's no obligation. It's just to find out a little more about if I'm a fit for you, what you're looking for, you know, if you like my vibe or if there's something I can help you with. Just it's a 15 minute free consultation. Go on my site, email me um, and then take it from there. But I love working with people in workshops, one to one or even talks because mindset stuff has changed my life. And I just, you know, I, I always think wh whenever I talk or do anything, if I can just impact or inspire somebody to even one person, but I, I like to think it's more, if I can impact or inspire you to think about something or make a change, that's what I'm all about. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love the work you do. And I, you know, I, I'm so glad you came back to share this because this is such valuable, you know, information that so many people are going to benefit from. Thank you so much, Mira, for being on the show. And I appreciate Thank you for having me back. It's been wonderful. Yes. Same here. You have a great day, Mira. Thank you, Stacey. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.